Today on All Things 80s, toy hunting in 1986. Welcome back to All Things 80s and today we're going to take a look at the Argos catalogue from 1986. Now for me personally, 86 was getting to the end of my first run with toys. Uh, I was getting to the age where I was supposed to act like a big boy and uh, this was probably the last year that I was actively looking at toys. Now also, in 1986, Star Wars as a franchise was well and truly dead. So I'm not expecting to see any Star Wars toys in this catalogue. And I'll be interested to see what toy line took the place of Star Wars. So anyway, let's go in and check out the toys of 1986. Okay, so toy hunting in 1986. Um, obviously calculators were a popular school item back then uh, and of course the famous calculator ruler. Uh, speak and spell, I remember seeing that a lot, didn't have it but I think I played with it at school and this one 16 I recognize that and that is uh, the little professor, that's right. Um, these are all kind of extremely nerdy toys because they did possess a lot of educational value not something as a child that really interested me, if I'm being honest. So now we got more electronic toys, and interestingly enough, there are no uh, video game consoles. So this was obviously at a time in the 80s where the Atari had kind of run its course, and we had yet to get things like uh, Nintendo, Nintendo, <laughs> Sega and Nintendo. But we have a couple of... Uh, interesting things here. Number five and six from Tomy are 3D electric games. Yeah, uh, played those, but they gave me, well, I think they, if I remember rightly, they gave me a bit of a headache and tired arms as well from having to hold it up to your face. Game & Watch was very good. I uh, had one of those, uh, thoroughly enjoyable. Over here, uh, Screwball Scramble, yep, had that. Cluedo I also had, I actually enjoyed playing that. That was the old murder mystery. What was it P Professor Plum with a candlestick in the dining room, something like that. Yeah, that was a, f a good family game. Uh, nothing else I really recognize. Uh, more board games. Aha, this is interesting. Trivial Pursuit was the toy or the game during this time in the 80s. And I wanted a, a set of Trivial Pursuit. And Christmas this year, 86, I asked for Trivial Pursuit. I did not get Trivial Pursuit. What I got was number nine, the TV Times telev television quiz game. And I don't think we ever played that as a family. Now, I want to see how much that cost in relation to Trivial Pursuit. So number nine, the TV Times game, TV Times... £8.95 and Trivial Pursuit is uh, £21.75. So there you go. That is why I did not get Trivial Pursuit but instead got the Radio Times game that was never played. So essentially it was money completely wasted. Um, Hungry Hippos, <coughs> excuse me, remember that. That was actually good timing. Hungry Hippos and I do a big burp. Nice. Anyway, uh, guess who played that at school a lot? Uh, Ghost Castle. I always wanted that. Never got that either. Uh, Downfall. Vaguely remember that one. Bed Bugs. Don't recall that. My Little Pony. Obviously, I wouldn't have known about that. Uh, Game of Life. Scruples. Remember the name, but don't know anything about that. Anyway, moving on. Uh, more games. Mr. Pop, yeah, played that. Space Attack. Was that like basically Rebound? Uh, possibly. Uh, Crossbows and Catapults. Remember the name, but don't recall those games. Uh, Test Match, I do remember playing that in uh, Last Day of Term. Would have been Primary 6, possibly. I don't remember, but anyway, Lego. Um, 
by this point I would finished with Lego um, and interestingly space Lego has kind of lost popularity I can see because back in the early 80s it was all about space Lego and this stuff I definitely did not have uh, because I know for a fact I did not have any black spacemen. I think I may have had one blue spaceman and that was it. The rest, obviously the white and the, the red with from the earlier releases and a few yellows. But yeah, I loved Space Lego. Technic, I always wanted this, this car, but again, it was probably expensive. So 13, yeah, 29.95, very expensive. Uh, okay, fair enough. Um, more sort of construction toys. Constructs from Fisher Price. I do not really remember those. Bolton build. Don't remember that, but it looks interesting, certainly. Yeah, I would have liked that. Uh, what's this? Robotics. Don't remember these, but again, like I said in the intro there, this was a time in the 80s where I was getting to the point where I probably was getting too old for toys. Now this is taking the absolute piss. If you saw my recent video where I listed 10 toys I always wanted but never had, three of them are there in a row. That was the Play-Doh, Barber set, Chemistry set and Mr. Frosty. Yeah, way to taunt me Argos. But yeah, nothing else. Spirograph was always a bit a lot of fun. Uh, Crayola, obviously by this point I was well, well past Crayola products. Uh, what's this? Magic Track, Magic Track, don't know that one. Uh, Stomper Speedsters, Stomper, this is ringing bells. Um, I don't believe I ever had these, but I always remember the name Stomper. Uh, Street racing, glow in the dark, that looks like fun. I uh, had these uh, Knight Rider walkie talkies. I wonder how much those were. 14 9.95. Wow. Uh, Skeletrics, of course, but no, nothing else here. Ah, now we're talking. Power machines, don't remember that. Uh, what's this? Rats? Four. Uh, R-A-T-S, what the hell does that stand for? I have no idea. I've never seen these before. Looks interesting. Zoids, don't remember that. And what is 10? 10 is the Mad Masher Monster Machine. With 16 super-sized balloon tires, it goes anywhere it wants. <laughs> okay. Uh, He-Man and the Masters of the Universe. So they've been out for a number of years at this point and I'm not seeing any of the sort of familiar characters I would remember. No, there's no, there's He-Man there. Okay. Um, what is 11? That's the Fright Zone. Home of the Evil Horde. 21 pounds. Still quite a lot. 12. Slime Pit. Interesting. Twelve pounds, and the figures. Okay, so thirteen, so three pounds forty-five. Um, yeah, this was that was pushing it in terms of pocket money. It would have taken me a few weeks to have saved up to get one of those figures, which is why, as I've mentioned, I stuck with Star Wars. Oh, and here's Rambo. Now Rambo, First Blood, and all that. That those were not kids' movies. Interestingly, we'd have a action figure line. Hmm. I'm trying to remember. I've not seen those movies in a long, long time, but they had strong language, I'm sure, and a reasonable amount of violence. Interesting they would do toys for that. Okay, I'm seeing Mask. We'll get to Mask in a second. Uh, sectors. No memory of those whatsoever. Jesus, number one is £14.75 for a giant spider and an action figure. That's a lot. What else do they have? Uh, Pinsir and Battle Beetle. £12. Mm. Thundercats. Now, this is interesting because 
I would watch the Thundercats cartoon and thoroughly enjoyed it, but never had any figures. Never had any desire to get the figures. I don't know why that was. Probably, again, I was buying so much Star Wars. But Mask. This was the last toy line I was actively involved in in my childhood. Had a few of these. Uh, had the Condor and the Piranha. And I had a couple of packs of, uh, or two packs of figures. Uh, one two-pack I had that was not of my choosing, which was really disappointing. It was I, I received, I think for my birthday, it was the robot who I think from memory was it T-Bob or something and uh, Matt Tracker's son. And aside from it, from them both being really lame uh, sort of toys, Matt Tracker's son didn't have uh, elbow or leg articulation, if I remember. I thought it was just a terrible figure. Very disappointed by that. Um, always loved Mask, and I think once I do get my Star Wars collection more complete than it is right now, I may start looking into getting some more Mask. Uh, as it stands, I only have a couple of figures, and I have one vehicle I got fairly recently. But that'll be for another video at another time. But yeah, so for me, Mask was pretty much the end of my uh, initial run with toys. So now we've got the Transformers. Now, I can see one that I did have, number two, um, Jetfire. Uh, that was the best or the biggest Transformer I had. Uh, loved that one. Um, the other ones, I'm not at all familiar with because, uh, like I said, I was at this time in my life, I was into mask and nothing else really mattered. So I, I, I was done with Star Wars, done with Action Force and probably done with mask or no, still into mask. I was done with Transformers, sorry. So Star Wars, Action Force and Transformers had been set to the side while I focused on Mask. Um, uh, these, none of these strike me as being that impressive, to be honest. Uh, five looks good. What is five? Um, jazz, of course. And uh, what's number four? Inferno. So yeah, quite a lot of uh, Transformers there. Wow, more Transformers. So. Transformers have filled three full pages, which is very interesting because even at, at their peak, Star Wars, it most only had a couple of pages. So clearly Transformers was the hot toy of 86. Um, don't recognize any of those. And of course, GoBots, who obviously came before Transformers, but were completely overshadowed by them in the end. Yep. Not bad. Okay, girly stuff. This is My Little Pony. Uh, uh, Acorn Green. Uh, I remember seeing that tree set, but couldn't tell you a damn thing about it. Is this Snuggle Bums? Mm, don't remember those. Care Bears, I do remember. Disney's Gummy Bears. Huh. I always thought Gummy Bears was a sweet treat. And what's this? Ah, Cabbage Patch Kids. Yeah. I think in 86, or was it 85? No, 80, 86 was the year of Garbage Pail Kids cards and stickers. Uh, Furskins. I said Foreskins. No, Furskins. Okay. Kind of weird looking. Pound Puppies, I remember that name. <clears throat> Gem, uh, don't remember that. The Hart family, what the hell is this? Uh, is this Jer Jern Jessica Fashion Doll? Number two, oh, what the hell? Oh, that was this stuff. Ah, uh, number seven, what, the Hart family. Uh, I have no idea what that is. Princess of Power. 
No. This was Shira, right? Uh, number 10. Uh, the magical home of the Princess of Power. Interesting. So, what we got? Let's see. 13 and 14. 13. Shira, yeah, Shira, the Princess of Power. So, interesting that these were basically action figures for girls. Now, I wonder if anyone who watched this or what is watching this video right now, if you were into He Man, were you also into Shira? And did you collect the girls' figures? I can't really imagine many boys being into that, but you never know. Oh, what's this? Barbie, of course. Uh... So, in 1986, we still are pushing on to girls the fact that they're supposed to be housewives. They should learn to, to vacuum, iron, and make the man's dinner. Okay, cool. And this is really young kid stuff. Mm, nothing there that I remember. Uh, what's this? Yeah, Fisher Price, but I don't see any adventure people. Uh, this is Glow. I bet that's Glowworm number one. Yeah, Glowworm. Remember the name, but um, what's this? Oh, this is real baby stuff. Snooker table, table football, roller skates. I thought we had the, by this point in time, we must have had those uh, roller disco boots where it was the actual boot you put your foot into with the, remember the big, uh, the big rubber stoppers on the toes? And that was it. Oh, it's a really horrible looking bicycle, isn't it? But those looked cool. Ket cars. So anyway, those were the toys of 1986. So those were the toys of 1986. And it was quite strange to look at a toy catalogue and not see any Star Wars. Uh, but it's quite clear that Transformers were the popular toy of that year. Now, let me know in the comments if you had any of these toys we looked at. And uh, thanks for watching. A uh, special thank you to the Patreons, and I ask you all to please like this video, please subscribe to the channel, and as always, stay tuned for more videos from all things 80s.